Parachoques con parachoques. A calentar motores. The first race was in Australia, the Australian Grand Prix. And at some point, Verstappen and Hamilton were fighting for P4. And Hamilton had been complaining about lack of grip. And now he was trying to catch up to Verstappen. And they were both complaining, uh, Hamilton, that he was never going to catch Verstappen and Verstappen complained that he was struggling to keep Hamilton out. No. There's no way I can get past this guy. Okay, copy that Lewis, just keep the pressure on. I've started to struggle a little bit more with the rears. And another funny moment that Australia gave was um, the local hero, uh, Daniel Ricciardo, having to retire due to engine failure. He took the turn and uh, the tire locked up, probably the transmission broke, and yeah, he had to pull out. We have talked Australia, now let's get out of here. Level 1 isn't that difficult, so we just have to get those cars out of the way. 1 minute and 10 seconds. Okay, so next up we take care of level 2, and the second race was in China where Lance Stroll had a very embarrassing incident with Mexican driver Checo Perez which put Stroll out of the race. It was deemed an um, incident so Perez was not punished and shortly thereafter Antonio Giovinazzi had a very embarrassing lockup with the tires that ended up with him in the wall. Next race was Bahrain in which Max Verstappen had a brake failure and had to get out of the race rather very, very mad. Brakes failed. <sighs> and then slightly later, Sainz was coming out of the pits and essentially T-boned uh, Lance Stroll, putting both drivers out of the race. Sainz received a grid penalty from the stewards for the next race, Russia. As we all know, in Russia, you don't drive a car, the car drives you and it drove Fernando Alonso insane due to mechanical failure. Try three times please, Fernando. I try already, so try yourself. Not only that, but it also drove Julian Palmer into Romain Grosjean, taking both drivers out of the race in what's arguably one of the most embarrassing crashes in Formula 1 history. Like, seriously, who does that? The next round in Spain was no less embarrassing, given that both Verstappen and Raikkonen had a very embarrassing incident at the first corner. And fans of uh, Ferrari were very, very upset of that, especially one little kid, which we're going to see right now, that was on tears. Uh, because of all that, but the tears wouldn't last for long because Raikkonen would give him a very good smile and an experience he would never ever forget. Like, yeah, that's a little heart melting, but not so heart melting and more embarrassing was Van Dorn, who also had a little bit of an incident with Massa. For the next race in Monaco, Alonso was away in Indianapolis around the Indy 500 and when he asked Jensen Button to take her of his car, this was his response. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna pee in your seat. <laughs> It is unknown whether or not Jensen actually peed in uh, Fernando's seat, but he did have a very shameful incident with Pascal Wehrlein. 
and when the resulting safety car allowed the lapped drivers to unlap themselves, Marcus Ericsson did this. <laughs> Next race was Canada, when in the first few corners, Sainz hilariously flew into Felipe Massa. And after moving one piece of the puzzle, we're gonna look at the crash from Massa's perspective. How did this happen? Well, as far as I see it, Grosjean scored a takedown on Sainz. But at least Grosjean had very kind words to say about it. What the mental guy? What was that? Fox, I think I've got damage on the front wing. What the mental guy? Now we're prepared for a front wing. We'll change the front wing. And we haven't even talked about the Force India scandal, where they were basically fighting for P3 with Daniel Ricciardo, and Perez disobeyed team orders hilariously, giving away the position to Vettel. A good quarry pass, Ricciardo. Checo Esteban is pushing, saying he can overtake Ricciardo if given the chance. So do what you can. It's a waste of time, man. Ricardo is taking off. I want the chance to overtake him. I mean, let us raise him, please. Checo, the plan is we want to attack before the Ferraris arrive behind us. So we are on that plan. If we switched and Ocon couldn't get past, we would switch back. Ricardo, I want the chance to go into the lap car. Just leave me alone now. Give me the chance now. We will pick up some traffic. There will be an opportunity. Ocon in pressure tires, able to uh, overtake Ricardo, but with Perez basically blocking him, Vettel essentially did this. Entschuldigung, Entschuldigung, can I squeeze past? Ja? Danke, danke, danke. Auf Wiedersehen, Schweinehund. I apologize to everyone because my German accent is, well, absolutely terrible. Though not as terrible as the disasters that happened in Azerbaijan, the next round, round 8. First off, another horrible, terrible Force India scandal. What did they still do, guys? Lots of debris on the track, three safety cars in a row, and in one of them, Vettel did this. Vettel literally just came alongside me and turned in and hit me. Are you, wait, he brake tested me! What the f going on? We have a 10 second stop and go penalty for dangerous driving. And we need to pay it uh, into lap for now. What did I do with dangerous driving then? Can you give me an explanation when I did dangerous driving? Um, uh, we, we speak after now, keep your head down. Then the race was red flagged because of all the debris. And when the red flag went away, the Ferrari team were quick to equip Raikkonen with everything that he needed. Steering wheel, collapse the steering wheel here. Give me the steering wheel. Hey, hey, steering wheel, somebody tell him to give it to me. Come on, move. And with that, we finished part one of our throwback to last season with just eight minutes on the clock a time we will definitely be able to beat and yes azerbaijan was the first ever podium for last stroll and he's the youngest driver to get a podium but let me ask you this whose idea was it to give lance stroll champagne out of a bloody shoe is he old enough to drink <laughs> He's old enough to drink. I'll let you prepare the drinks. Well, come on, gentlemen. You know, you're on, you're on the podium here in Azerbaijan. You can't refuse a drink from the winner, or can this you? Is, you realize that this is going to scar me for life. <laughs> oh my god, I'm too young for this. Toma ya, has ganado la carrera. A ver qué tenemos aquí. Muy bien. Vamos allá. The only really interesting, relevant moment that happened in the Austrian Grand Prix was the moment when Kvyat, 
torpedoed directly into uh, Fernando Alonso, taking out uh, Max Verstappen along with him. Not really that interesting, the whole race was rather actionless. Then came the, the UK, which had a uh, old British driver Jolyon Palmer retire before the race even started because of a failure in his brakes. Uh, BPW failure. Brake pedal going long. What an awful feeling is that to have to pull out to the side of the track before the lights even go out to start the race. What a shame. And when the British Grand Prix came, Giviat just torpedoed himself into Carlos Sainz, his own teammate. Sainz was out, and of course, as it tends to happen in these kinds of incidents, both drivers were blaming each other for the incident. Yeah, well, okay. You can tell Danny. He did a very good job there. He just turned it for me. Also, the British Grand Prix was the only home win in the entire season, being the winner, of course, Lewis Hamilton. And he shows love for the fans in his country. And what can I say about these fans? We've got the best fans here. Thank you, everyone who turned up. I see you out there. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. After the British Grand Prix came the Hungarian Grand Prix. And in Hungary, in the very first lap, Max Verstappen scored a takedown on his teammate. Someone hit me. Yeah, I'm still yeah. looking at it. Is that who I think it was? Yes. It's all over. He has a point. In fact, let's look at the crash from Lewis Hamilton's perspective. And that done, we can take care of level one, finally. Madre mía, que bueno eres. Hmm, lo que sospechaba. Tendrás que dejar la gasolina sin plomo. There were two incidents that Belgium will become absolutely infamous for, or at least go as infamous in the history books of Formula 1. And it was a certain incident, or rather two incidents, between the Force India guys. Is the first of them where Perez basically bangs uh, Ocon against a wall. Um, essentially, this Haas was kind of blocking him and Perez kind of misjudged the gap, so yeah, he ended up hitting Ocon. And then a few laps later, he just ran into uh, Ocon. Half of Ocon's front wing just went away, but Perez came out rather unscathed, didn't he? At least he doesn't look to me like he's got a lot of damage. But let's look at it the good way. I mean, Ocon was very forgiving and kind about it and totally did not insult his teammates. Guys, what the f Honestly, what the f is this guy doing? Front wing broken now. Idiot. And I do not want to betray my fellow Mexican, but that sexy French hunk has a point. I mean, what the bloody hell was Perez doing over there? And after Belgium, grab your favorite pasta and a, big, and a big plate of pizza because we are going to look at the Grand Prix in Italia where surprisingly for some reason Lance Stroll started second on the initial grid. But that's not the interesting part. The interesting part, well one of them, was when Massa basically rammed accidentally into Max Verstappen with undesirable consequences. Do we have damage? Yeah, I think so. Fuck, fuck, chef. Oh, what the f is he doing? And then came the Alonso and Palmer incident later. What Palmer is doing? He needs to give me back the position. Cut the chicken. Palmer has a five second penalty. Five seconds, it's a joke. A joke. Yeah, we know Fernando, we, we can't do anything apart from give it everything, maximum pace. A few moments later... Um, where is Palmer? And Fernando Palmer has retired. Palmer! 
let us admit it, that was really funny indeed. And, well, let's admit it, Palmer is an incompetent idiot, so that was rather expected. Nervios de acero. No me extraña que fueras tan bueno en las carreras. ¿Seguro que quieres sacar eso? Muy bien. Vamos allá. You know what's next? The great drama. The next race was in Singapore. Singapore. Oh, Singapore, you always start the races without incidents whatsoever, don't you? <laughs> the two Ferraris were out, as was Max Verstappen and Fernando Alonso, and look at the damage in Vettel's car. Let's look at Verstappen's perspective. I got damage, got damage! <laughs> and then Daniel Kvyat did a uh, Kvyat. And then the last crash was Marcus Eriksson who lost control of his car due to residual humidity on tarmac. Uh, well, he basically spun around and yep, he brought he sprang another safety car for a total of three safety cars in the race. As if the initial crash and Kvyat being Kvyat hadn't been enough. And then for the following race in Malaysia, no more vodka because Kvyat is out to be replaced with Pierre Gasly. Great move by Toro Rosso to replace the unhandsome and competent Russian with a more handsome, attractive Frenchman. And speaking of the French, Esteban Ocon had a bit of an incident with Carlos Sainz during, during the race. Yeah, luckily none of the two cars were damaged and uh, Ocon could just finish the race as if nothing had happened, he just lost a few seconds for, you know, having to turn around after, you know, that little crash, and yeah, nothing really happened, he was unharmed, no damage to the car, he just has to turn around and get back to the track as if nothing had happened, no virtual safety car, no safety car, it was all calm. Or at least it was until after the chicken flag, when basically Vettel drove directly into Lance Stroll. And yes, both drivers were blaming each other. Stroll is not looking where he's going. He completely shunted into my car. Well, Vettel just ran right into the side of me. But Pascal Wehrlein was kind enough to give Vettel a little hitchhike back to the pit lane. And it was also a birthday weekend for Formula 1 because Max Verstappen, the winner of the race, had, had turned 20 years old the day previous to the race. Super, super job, uh, Max. That's really great drive. So, uh, welcome to being a 20-year-old. Great, uh, great start to a new decade for you. Well done. Uh, thank you very much, Christian. That was great. And grab a piece of sushi because next race was in Japan where Carlos Sainz didn't quite end well his last race for Toro Rosso before he moved to Renault. He wound up in the wall, absolute disaster for the Spaniard. I'm really sorry guys, yes but for it didn't happen. It's okay Carlos, it's okay, Shiva to close the race like this, but anyway, thank you for all this time. And Sebastian Vettel with a perfect pace. Absolutely no problems at all, nothing's going wrong, he's going to finish the race perfectly. Box Sebastian Box, wow. we retire the car, I'm afraid. Oh, uh, actually he has a serious problems with his internal combustion engine, and he has to retire and very much sacrificing his world championship, basically giving it as a gift to Lewis Hamilton. Mamma mia! Wait a second. 
Uh, Nico Hülkenberg isn't in DRS zone. Why is it open? My, my DRS is stuck open. My DRS is stuck open. Oh. It doesn't close. Understood. And the pit crew tries to fix the DRS wing with very high technology. As uh, you might have guessed, it doesn't work. He had to retire. And then Lance Stroll having another very uh, embarrassing moment. Um, you might wonder, why the bloody hell is he drifting like this? Well, um, you may see those sparks over there. That's a good explanation for them. Um, it's a bit of a miracle that he didn't crash with the Red Bull there. It happens that his uh, front suspension snapped. And his front right tire has about as much pressure as my ass cheeks. I'm sorry Lance Stroll, but you'll have to retire and we have to get out of here. Vuelve si tienes algún problema. Esto va a dolerte un poco. ¿Listos? Let's go to round 17 in the land of Donald Trump. Where unfortunately for the US Grand Prix, Pierre Gasly was away in Japan to run a race that unfortunately was cancelled due to a typhoon. So in the US, Danny Kvyat run instead in his last ever race so far. It was also the first time ever that Brendan Hartley starts a race and uh, the US Grand Prix had this little incident between Pascal Berline and Kevin Magnussen where basically Magnussen was trying to overtake Verline and well got a little bit touchy-feely. A bit of a racing incident not not much to say about this, but yeah, he's the first out of four in a row. Embarrassing races for uh, Daniel Ricciardo to finish up this season. His engine was basically gone. He just lost power at that particular corner. Engine's gone. Engine's gone. Karma for giving Magnussen a few laps later. Turns out that Marcus Ericsson can also get a little bit touchy-feely when overtaking. Although that was not exactly a racing incident, it... Well, probably not. Or... You judge. But... Yeah, basically that was a touch and uh, Magnussen lost control of his car. You know, that... That spin. Very common, very common. That's probably the most common type of accident. And, yeah, that's basically what happened. And you may remember this little moment, an overtaking in the last lap made by Max Verstappen over Kimi Raikkonen. Sure, everyone will agree that uh, overtake was done legally and it was absolutely amazing, right? No, actually, the stewards disagree. And now I get the joke why some people say that the FIA is just Ferrari International Assistance. But let's admit it, we all know why that happened. Any Mexican will know exactly why that penalty happened, but what about you, Max? Uh, do you know why that penalty was given to you? Because I'm Dutch. Exactly, because you're Dutch. And exactly, that was an unjustified penalty. But an also unjustified penalty was this little incident in the 2014 uh, World Cup where Arjen Robben caused a penalty that got uh, Mexico out of the World Cup. So consider that karma, won't you? And I know what you're thinking, that this penalty is one more reason why the US is a country of idiots. But since the amount of reasons is just shy of 63 million already, that barely makes it dent. Now put away your yellow wig because we will not pay for that wall. Let us take a look at the, the infamous incident in the Mexico Grand Prix where Vettel basically rammed himself into uh, Lewis Hamilton causing a puncture. And in that race, five cars retired, one of them was uh, Daniel Ricciardo, but the most relevant was Brendan Hartley, being the only driver to bring out a virtual safety car, because his car just set on fire. Mate, I'm losing a lot of power. So 
Stop the car, Brenton. Stop the car in a safe place. Stop the car. Mamma mia. Also, the highlight of the Mexican Grand Prix was that Vettel was unable to keep up with the pace and get to second place, which means that Lewis Hamilton got the World Championship. Congratulations to Lewis Hamilton and cue the montage! Second to last race in Brazil, in the Italago circuit, where Lewis Hamilton, because of a engine failure in qualifying, started from the pit lane. First lap, first drama, there's Daniel Ricciardo. Oops, he had a bit of an incident with uh, Stoffel van Dorn and uh, Kevin Magnussen. Uh, fortunately, he was relatively unharmed. He was able to finish the race. Uh, Van Dorn was also unharmed, right? He was totally not turned into a sandwich. Uh, I got, I got squeezed. Copy. Is the car okay? No! 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 And here's Romain Grosjean, who is presumably jealous of his more attractive fellow Frenchman and to try to kill him, or at least make him less attractive, or whatever, he smashes him. That's what jealousy can do. Right there. Exactly. What a shame. Instead of, you know, getting plastic surgery, or makeup, or shaving that horrendous or horrible beard that Roman has, simply smashing Ocon will fix it, and damaging his car severely. Right? I don't think so, but at least Roman Grosjean was very aware that he did wrong, right? Box now, Roman. Box now. We have a technical penalty. Box now. For what? From the Ocon incident. They put us up. He must be kidding me. He must be kidding me. Yeah. Oh, and look at Lance Stroll! That is some severe case of tired elimination! How that happened, I have no idea, and uh, honestly, I want to know what is uh, what causes that type of tired elimination, but seriously, that needs some serious fix! Ouch! And now for the main highlight of the Brazilian Grand Prix! where somehow Felipe Massa's son got access to a transponder. How? I have no idea, but what came next was very cute indeed. So proud of you, and where wherever you go, I will support you. I love you. By the way, I love your start. Bye, Jim. Jim, 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 Jim. Thank you. I love you. All. Thank you so much. I love all of you guys. Last race in Abu Dhabi, the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, where we had incidents like Kevin Magnussen and Pierre Gasly losing control of their cars in the most hilarious fashion. Don't worry, none of them had to retire. But that was not the case for Daniel Ricciardo, who had a terrible engine failure, his third retirement in the last four races of the season. Kind of an embarrassing way to finish the season, isn't it? Okay mate, we've got a hydraulic problem. We're gonna go mode one and switch off mate, sorry about that. At least uh, another driver, Carlos Sainz, got it absolutely perfect. Or did he? I mean... It seems like something went wrong. Uh, he just came out of the pit, so... What could be going wrong with Carlos Sainz? 
Turns out one of the tires was not secured properly and it was pretty much getting out of place. Yeah, one tire is not on. One tire is off. Okay, take a step, stop the car, stop the car, please. Put it for the guys. Uh, it was coming like a nice one for the shape. Exactly. Too bad, too bad he had to retire from the race. Embarrassingly. Uh, here's the pet stop, you see how this tire is not really put properly, the wheel nut isn't secure the way it should, and so it's already wobbling, causing problems already getting out of the pit lane. He could have uh, stopped there, but he would have caused many problems for, you know, the next uh, driver who was trying to get out of the pit lane. So, yeah, not really an option. Valtteri Bottas and Lewis Hamilton winning the very last race of the 2017 season. And of course those fireworks to celebrate. And the latter part of the season was absolutely dominated by the Mercedes team. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So well managed. Very well done, Dante. Yes! Twenty twenty nine will definitely be able to beat that. And uh, let's take a look at my top five teams from this season. I think it was uh, number five Williams, number four Force India, number three Red Bull, number two Ferrari. And number one, Mercedes, of course. Toma ya. Has ganado la carrera. Because they were the champions. Obviously. Si. And of course, not all drivers that entered this season will start the, uh, the new one. Uh, for the 2018 season, Pascal Verlein will be replaced by Charles Leclerc. And Felipe Massa for Williams will be replaced by Sergei Sirotkin. Love him or hate him, I've got one word for it, vodka. Somebody tell him to give it to me. Come on! 
Ben Oh I'm so sad right now. Look at my nephew. Why are you wearing a princess dress? Is this what you got for Christmas? <laughs> Why did you ask for a princess dress for Christmas? Boys don't wear princess dresses! <laughs>